Hi, and welcome to our next video in the Microbiology series. In this video, we take a look at nomenclature, or how we name things. Before we get into the whole sciency goodness of nomenclature, let's begin by trying to give directions to where you might live. If somebody was to come up to you and say, hey, where do you live? And you were to say, for example, 3111 World Drive, that really doesn't tell us where you actually live. All we know is that you're on some street named World Drive and your specific place is 3111. But we don't know where on the planet you actually are. And so we have to drill down. We have to be specific. So, for example, what planet do you live on? Well, I live on planet Earth. What continent do you live on? North America. What country in North America do you live in? Well, that would be the United States of America. What state? Florida. What city? Lake Buena Vista. Now, knowing our state, knowing our city, giving the street address makes sense. Now we can plug it into a GPS and find our location. And so when we're taking a look at nomenclature, when we're taking a look at how we name things, understand that we're basically trying to drill down to be very specific in a name so we can't confuse it with some other name. Again, think of your directions as far as that goes and the purpose we do this so we can be, again, specific. Now, there's a name for people who do this. We have something called taxonomy. Taxonomy is the science of identifying, describing, naming, and classifying organisms. Now, don't get this confused with taxidermy, which is stuffing dead animals. That is a totally different field, although a taxonomist might do taxidermy for fun. Sounds like the beginning of a tongue twister. So how did this whole thing begin? Who is to blame for us having to learn different names of critters? Well, we can thank an old Greek guy by the name of Aristotle. Aristotle classified living organisms into one of three plants or animal groups. So you were either a plant or you were an animal. If you were a plant, then you could be either classified as herbs, shrubs, or trees. If you were an animal, you could be classified as fish, birds, or land animals. Now, this was a very primitive attempt at classification of organisms, but you know what? Somebody had to start it. And this naming convention lasted for quite a long period of time, in fact, almost about 2,000 years. And we don't use this classification system anymore. In fact, we use something called a binomial naming system, a binomial system. And this was created back in the 18th century by a gentleman named Carl Linnaeus. Now, with some modifications, obviously, this has evolved over the years, but this is what we more or less use today for our nomenclature. We use a binomial system. Now, you might not be familiar with the term binomial system, but I guarantee you, you are familiar with some of the critters' names using this particular system. So, an organism gets two names. It makes up its organism's proper name. So, for example, my proper name in the outside world is Scott Ford. I have a first name and a last name. Well, organisms get a first name and a last name, but we really don't call it a first and last name. We'll talk about what that is in just a second. So again, the two name system is known as a binomial. Of course, bi means two. If you are in a bicycle, you have two wheels. So bi means two. So binomial, two names. The way we classify things is a hierarchy. We drill down and get more and more specific as we go further down specific branches. So it's um, a hierarchy system that we use for our names. You might be familiar with the levels of our classification. We have kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Now I got to tell you, I got to come clean on this one. I took college biology. I took biology in college. I took microbiology in grad school. I took all these different science courses and I was presented with kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species many, 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 many times. And I would memorize them for an exam and then move on with my life. It wasn't until I taught high school biology that I learned kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species in order without having to refer to notes 
or a uh, mnemonic device. And the reason why was because I had to grade papers where I had students list the, the levels, the uh, classification levels in the taxonomy system. And when you're grading 60 papers, King of Final Classroom Panel GCP Species, you're just going down over and over and over and over again. And you tend to memorize them after you've seen 60 some odd papers of them. So the level names are not that difficult to memorize. It does require memorization. Now, there are two mnemonics which I'm going to present to you. Mnemonics are, of course, ways to remember things. So, for example, if you have ever played a musical instrument, you might be familiar with FACE, F-A-C-E, the spaces in music, or E-G-B-D-F, every good boy deserves fudge, or every good boy deserves fun, depending on who you learned it from. These are what we call mnemonics. And if you join me from the anatomy and physiology videos, you might remember interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. I passed my anatomy test for the steps of mitosis. So these are different mnemonic devices. For our levels of taxonomy, we have two different ones. The first one is kings play chess on fine green sand. Or you can also do King Philip came over from German shores. Or again, you could just learn the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. But either way that you can do it, go for it. So we talked about the fact that we have a classification system. We talked about the fact that it's really a two-part naming system. There's a like first name and a last name. And we looked at the levels of taxonomy. So how do we write the binomial system? Now it comes the testable material. Now you have to write this stuff. Well, the first part of the name, the first name, the, so for example, my first name is Scott. So in this case, the first name of the organism is called the genus. And you capitalize the first name. You capitalize genus. The second part of the last name, the last name, so for example, my last name is Ford. In this case, the second part of the name is the epithet. And for this one, you write it in lowercase. So the entire name is written in either italics or is underlined, and it goes genus epithet. That would be, of course, your species. Here are some examples of some ones that you've probably run into in the course of just being alive. You have, of course, the family dog, which is Canis familiaris. You have the house cat, which is Felis catus, or Panis in Neckus. <laughs> and then you have the human, which is the Homo sapien, and of course, a type of bacteria, and there's lots of bacteria out there, Streptococci pneumoniae. Now, looking at what I'm showing you right now, does this look correct to you? Has Mr. Ford made a mistake? Well, the answer to that, of course, is yes. In fact, what I've written is 100% incorrect. If I was to turn this in on an exam, I would be rightfully marked zero. I would get no credit for any of these terms that I turned in. These would be wrong. And the reason why they're wrong, as we just stated a second ago, is because I didn't write them in the correct format. I needed to write them either italicsed or underline. Now, I personally, just because I've done a lot of web development, hate to underline things. This has just grown on me over the years because underlined in our society typically means a hyperlink. If you are writing this out by hand, however, you really don't have to worry about people getting confused with the hyperlink, and so you can either italicize them or underline them. I would suggest, good suggestion here, I would suggest you talk to your instructor and find out how they want you to write them down on an exam. Again, keep in mind, if they're not written correctly, they are not correct, and don't complain if you don't get any points for it. Now, there is a way to make life a little bit easier when you write the binomial naming system. And that is once you have written the full name, once you have written the correct name, you then get to abbreviate the genus. So for example, if I had written streptococci pneumoniae earlier in a paper or a report or somewhere, I could then abbreviate it S period pneumoniae. Again, either still italicizing it or underlining it, and you can do that. Okay, so this was a short presentation. Hopefully it was a short presentation, but very important that you know how to name things, both in biology as well, definitely in microbiology, because you're gonna be doing a lot of naming. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe. Your subscriptions help us grow. Like, share, and tell your friends about these videos. Come visit us on Facebook at Mr. Ford's Class Learning or Twitter at Mr. Ford's Class. And until later, see you later. Have fun studying up there. Goodbye for now.